He's got a cider. <laughs> <laughs> who, who needs heads? Exactly. Cheers. Cheers. So, Dick, where are you going? Uh, well, the van's all ready to go and do the, the trial run, mate. We're going to go to, I say we, me and the van, we're going to kill the forest on the way through to Scotland. So I'll be there for a few weeks before I get ready to leave the country. It's going to be great. I've come all the way up to kill the forest for one photo. Um, I'm on my way through to Scotland at the moment. I slept in Scotland last night, in fact, and I'm going to go back there again later. But there's this one photo I really wanted to get, and the reason I wanted to get it is because my friend Duncan got it with his um, Overlander, his Ford Ranger, Rita the Ranger, and uh, I wanted that shot as well. So I've come here to kill the forest. Now, kill the forest is it's man made, it's massive open space. There's, there's forest, there's trees. Um, there's dirt track roads, there's footpaths, there's deer. It's one of the best dark sky sites in the UK where you can stargaze to your heart's content most of the time, apart from last night when it was complete cloud coverage. And there's also a massive reservoir in the middle. Um, so it's Northumberland and it's right on the border with Scotland. So later on I'm gonna be going that way, straight into Scotland, as soon as I've got this photo. Well, I was driving out of Kilda Forest towards Scotland, but I've just seen this nice little patch out of the window and I've decided I'm gonna set myself a five, five shot challenge. So whenever you wanna improve your photography, one of the best ways to do it is with a personal project and personal projects don't have to be about the thing you do. They can be about anything. and. The, the advantage that they will bring you, no matter what the project is, is it will improve your photography and your genre. So as a travel photographer, if I shoot portraits for my personal projects, for example, then I can take skills from portrait photography that I've learned and transfer them back into travel photography. So what I'm gonna do right now is just do a little personal project, a quick five shot challenge. I'm gonna have a look in the woods here, have a look among the trees and see if I can find five shots they don't have to be amazing shots they just i just have to find five shots looking for light and composition and color and um, depth i think as well looking at what's out here um but yeah I, I encourage you to do the same and i'm going to quickly take a walk outside hmm um there's a tree over there that's fallen, but the light on it's pretty cool. But there's one right here as well. Let's have a little, let's have a walk, see if we can get to it. There's a bit of water on the ground, but I can see some, uh, I can see some animal tracks. I should be able to follow. Right here. What have we got? All right, I think there's a shot in there somewhere. Let's, um, let's have a look. I wonder if there's any details, if there's any details I could do, like a, like a straight down shot of something like this, pine cones everywhere, there could be something cool, if something's hitting the light somewhere, not there, that's a bit bright, but like here, yeah, that's the one, we're gonna, let's go for a 24, you know, 
Um, about a small, something small that's got, ooh, no, that's too bright. I want like a fern sticking up or something like that. This, by the way, this is something I get up to all the time. Oh, look at that. Can I cross here? Is it safe? Is this like a, is this like a beaver dam or something? There's water, not a beaver, but you know, something. Cause it's all like deliberate and there's water and water and then a stream. I wonder if, yeah, that's cool. Right, I'm gonna go another way around anyway. So what I was saying, yeah, I get up to this sort of stuff quite often because during the day, you don't get the best light. Um, but you can do things to find better light. I think there's a shot there, hang on. This is gonna be, I have to spin the hat around while I talk to you and take the picture at the same time. Cool. Um, I get up to this stuff all the time because you have to practice and practice and practice and practice and the light isn't the best during the day because it's coming straight down. There's just harsh light or if it's overcast, it's just fairly boring because this big soft box in the sky, i.e. the clouds, is just softening everything so there's no shadow, there's no contrast, there's no depth, there's, there's no difference between one thing and the other. How many shots have I done? Oh, what was that? Did you hear that? Something just huffed. Or like, like that. Is there something here? That's pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty enormous. It's pretty cool. So these personal projects keep everyone on their toes anyway. So I like to keep on my toes because if I'm gonna sell pictures to, fact, I'm gonna get a close up there and I think that's my five shots. If I'm gonna sell photos to various magazines and websites and companies that, you know, wanna buy them, all oh, that light's good. Right, I'll show you those properly. Um, then I need to be on top form and I need to keep practicing and keep my skills up and do all these things that keep me on my toes. Keep practicing, keep the personal projects up, bring in the skills from other parts of photography that I can bring into travel photography Occupy my time during the day while I'm moving about as well, fill in the time, see if there's... See, there might even be a shot in here that I can get rid of. You never know. But yeah, that's, um, that's something that happens quite often. There's five quick shots, a little challenge. Ooh, and uh, only took 10 minutes or so and kept my skills going and I'm back on the road.
Well, today I decided I want to go and check out the Falls of Clyde, but to get there you have to go through this place called New Lanark and it's it's a World Heritage Site, it's on the UNESCO list. So I'm having a little look around town at this, uh, it's an old cotton mill, it's on the River Clyde, it's an old cotton mill from uh, somewhere in the 1700s. It's pretty cool, it's actually closed today. So I'm just sort of passing through having a little nosy and uh, on my way through to the Falls of Clyde. Let's go take some waterfall photos. Well, I've done 20 minutes or so on the trail. I've walked past a power station um, and I've walked up quite a steep incline. I can hear water. I think it's coming from around that corner over there. But I'm way higher than I want to be. So, how do I get there? Is there a trail I can walk down? There's got to be something. I've got to get the shot that people haven't got. I've got to get somewhere that... And, uh, Somewhere that people don't go. It needs to be a unique perspective. How can I do that? I'm giving up. Um, I'm only here for like an hour and a half and I want to get onto these rocks, but you can't, there's no way down. Um, I've, I've looked all over the place. I've gone off the trail. I've tried to figure out how to get here onto these rocks or up here or down here and there is no way and I can't shoot through all this thick foliage to get a clean shot of any of the waterfalls so I've had a lovely walk and I'm going to call that it for the uh, Falls of Clyde I'm going to move on to whatever's next and whatever's next is actually I'm going to go visit John Aldred another one of the DIY photography authors and we're going to go for a cup of tea and a walk Just a quick thought while I'm on my way to John's. We're aiming for Glasgow by the way, but if that was New Lanark, New Lanark, and this, if this is Lanark, and New Lanark, New Lanark is a World Heritage Site, then surely Lanark is older and therefore qualifies as well. There's a little bit of a waterfall here that might be cool. Okay. Um, Should have bought some lights, man. I realised why... I can't see you. Oh. 
<laughs> I just realised why it looks different. It's because this tree's only a stump now. <laughs> ah. You might want to crisscross your camera. <laughs> I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Yeah, I made it. Oh, nice. I thought you'd like that. Where's the deer? <laughs> oh, the deer are over there. We can get down here. I'm gonna leave my bag up here. I'll photograph this bit of bunch already. Is that Tarzan? <laughs> I wasn't expecting um, water. I was expecting animals and life and things like that. So I don't have anything to stabilize with. So I'm going to try and shoot. Set myself another challenge. I'm going to try and shoot a long exposure of the water somehow, handheld. Give that a go. See what happens. That was, uh, that was fun. Where are we going? We're going up over some fields yeah. to where we might see deer. Right, okay. Are um, you promising or are you...? No, I, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I, I normally see them at least once, yeah. normally. Yeah. Um, either going there or coming back, we'll, we'll see probably at least one deer. Right, okay. Uh, but at the other side of the field where the deer usually are, we meet back up with the river again. Oh, cool, okay. Uh, and it's a fun river. I mean, it's nice having everything this close to the house, but it's like the river goes in both directions for miles. Yeah. So if you and what if we're like this land that we're on, yeah, fields. So we're around the back of the houses over there. Yeah. So if we go away from them that way, how far do we go? Uh, walking, I think we, we go like a couple of miles, and then there's a golf course, and then more houses. Okay. Um, See, this is it. This is my money. My language. This yeah. is. This is. This is it. Brilliant. Getting out, yeah. away from people, away from civilization. Well, not all people. Hi. Apart from you. <laughs> Everyone except John. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the same. It's like whenever I want to go out shooting in Scotland, I want to go with one person. Yeah. And just hang out, have yeah. a nice conversation. Yeah. I don't want to be around. Not be timed. Yeah. Not have to be somewhere at a certain place at a certain yep. time or whatever. Yep. Just take your time, relax, explore. Take it all in, enjoy it. Yeah. Even better when you're camping. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I wasn't that way, was I? <laughs> I'll 
Yes. Where are we going now? That way. What? That That's way. That. Over that. Yeah. Right. Oh dear. Oh yeah. You might have just caught the arse of that in your video. <laughs> no. Iron brew. Yeah, I'm having second thoughts about this. But all right, let's do it. Cross it a couple of times. It's not so bad. All right. Let's see if we get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Dude. Yo. That was awesome. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. John has a YouTube channel. Yes, I do. YouTube.com slash John Aldred. John Aldred. A L D R E D. He'll stick a thing. I'll do a thing. Because yeah. now I know <laughs> now I know how to do YouTube. I'll do a thing in the description. I'm proud of you, buddy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dude. Thank you very much, see you later. Yeah. This morning I have woken up in Glen Etive, which is basically um it's where James Bond's childhood home was in one of the Bond films. And uh, it was pretty cold last night, but not too cold. However, I have decided that when I get back for uh, tighten up week, it's definitely uh, going to be time to fit the diesel heater. Um, in bed was fine, but when I got out of bed, um, the hands just went. I had the door open. I was flying the drone around here where I slept. It was nice, though. It was really nice, but something happened. So I'm sat exactly here in this spot last night on the phone to a friend. And it was pitch black, it was raining, and there's cloud everywhere, so I couldn't see a thing. Um, and in here there's a few lights, so a few things glow, and there's reflections in the windows and stuff like that. But right here at this window, something walked past while I was on the phone. And I'm not... I'm not joking, I'm not making it up, I wasn't seeing things. I know what all the reflections look like, I know what all the shadows look like that when I move and things like that. Something went from here to here, like walking at the right height, everything, everything was spot on. And my heart went into my mouth. I thought, oh my God, Scottish Bigfoot. Um, and I turned all the lights on on the outside and there was like it took me a second to process what was going on and I saw nothing but yeah th there was something there was definitely something anyway so here I am in Glen Etive and um, I'm gonna have a little look around this valley today and then I've got to prep myself because I've got a load of work to do uh, and tonight I'm gonna be on the grid with Scott Kelby um, talking about um, the career thing that I mentioned in episode one and so I'm going to fly the drone.
I just wanted to touch, um, while I'm here in in this awesome valley, this glen, Glen Ative, um, which, if you haven't realised yet, is the road from the Skyfall Bond movie. Um, I just wanted to talk about why I'm doing this a, a little bit more. Um, I think it, it was best put by Bon Jovi, who said, it's my life, it's now or never. Um, I, I want to get a grip of what I want to do and, and the travel photography really took off. Um, in the past couple of years, it's been growing and growing and growing. And um, like I said in episode one, um, this motto that I live by once in a lifetime as often as you can, that's really become a powerful thing in my, in my life. And it sticks in my mind all the time. And I want to do all these once in a lifetime things all the time. Um, so I built this van so that I could do that, so that I could travel, remove the expenses of flights and accommodation and rental cars and all that sort of stuff. And as I'm driving down this road, bumpy and everything, and everything's rattling around in the back of the van, it's really hitting home to me that this is the right thing that I wanted to do. It's the right thing for me to do, and it's the best way to pursue the business that I am in, because I can see so many different things, and I just sleep in the right spot, wake up in the morning, and I'm somewhere else. So I'm gonna be doing that as often as I can, and I'm gonna be showing you the whole journey that I'm taking. And um, the, the strange thing about this van, and I can compare it to motorbikes. So when I when I rode motorbikes, um, which unfortunately I'm not doing at the moment, but hopefully uh, hopefully I will again. When I rode motorbikes, um, I've had sporty bikes, I've had big adventure bikes. You'd ride down the road, and like kids would see you and stare at you going past and point, and you know, and the same thing when you're driving a police car, kids stare that you're going past in a police car and things like that. I'm finding that with this van, fully grown adults are staring at it going down the street. People are asking me, what have you got in there? How did you do it? Um, all these awesome questions that have shown me that I've done the right thing and that I'm sort of, I'm having the right effect on people. Like people want to do this and they're not doing it. People want to do this and live their dreams, but there's something stopping them and holding them back. And that's fine. If that's if that's the situation, then that's fine. But I, I made sure I put myself in a position where nothing would hold me back, and I went and did it. And and here we go. This is the journey. This is what I'm doing. I made some pretty big um, life changes to do this as well. So obviously, quitting the day job, which was something I needed to do anyway. Um, anyone that knew me there knew that I needed to do that. Um, but you need to make changes in your life to to get excitement and and to push yourself. Um, there's a there's a saying about butterflies in your stomach. You, you get excited because you get butterflies in your stomach. Well, if nothing ever changes, you don't get those butterflies. And so we need to take our aspirations and our our desires and we need to turn those into our possibilities because then we will get those butterflies when we make those changes and exciting things happen and we realize what our potential actually is. spot for a waterfall um, we're going to do a, a long exposure it's going to be on a 24 to 70 lens uh, with an ND 1000 or a 10 stop ND filter just need to find the right position I can't really get the foreground in because it's moving too much so it's going to all be blurry I wonder if there's it's like a little canyon I wonder if there's a shot from over there, looking through here. Let's go and have a look. Over here. Oh, yes. There it is. Right, so, if I set up here, that's my view. Okay, yeah, that's the shot. Right. It's quite slippery, I don't like that. I don't need to be very high at all actually, I can keep it low. I'm gonna bring, bring these legs. 
legs out. Get a more stable base. A bit of grass there. And like that, right. I've definitely got windy Scotland here. Um, I've just stopped for a little bit of breakfast and uh, uh, Glen Etive has turned out to be epic. The weather sucks. Um, it's clearing up now, so I'm gonna get a couple more shots with this nice weather and then I'm gonna move on. Um, I don't know where, I need some phone signal and there's none here. So I need to go find somewhere where I'm gonna be able to get data because I've got work to do. Um, yeah. Well, I had planned on uh, going to Glen Finn and Viaduct this morning and shooting the train going over the bridge there, uh, or over the viaduct rather, but um, apparently Scotland had other ideas. So I've decided that today instead is an admin day and tomorrow there's uh, better weather and tomorrow I'm going to go and shoot the viaduct in the morning, 10.45 when the train passes over, which means I've got some 18 hours to kill now. Um, I've been in service at Coffee Fern Bay. I've changed out the water, put some fresh water in, changed the toilet, disgusting. If you want to see any of this stuff, by the way, if you want to see how everything in here works, or how the water works, or the electrics, or how anything like that, just let me know, um, and I'll make sure I'll feature it so you can see exactly what's going on in here. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna sit in the rain with my laptop after I finish my lunch. Let's try again tomorrow. Well, I got bored of, I got bored of sitting inside, so I thought I need to go for a walk. So I took the long lens. Uh, here we go, long lens. Easy, 70 to 200, um, out for a little walk. See if I can find some deer or something. And I'm walking through the woods and I've seen a shot and it's raining still and it's pretty cold, but. So what I've seen, is trees fallen over over a stream which is flowing quite fast because of the river there's no sky it's all in enclosed in the green flowing water that the wood look oh it's just oh come 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 i need to i need to get changed i need to put waders on because i need to get in the water to get the shot i want come come I like it. I wonder where the deer are. Isn't that cool? Right, time to get out of here. Quick, because I don't want to fall over. This water's moving pretty fast. I'm dry, I'm warm, and I have succeeded. If you want a shot, you get the shot. And today, with awesome tripod, the three-legged thing, Bucky, if you're interested, and uh, some very, very fashionable waders. I got the shot. Right, I think it's time for a cup of tea. Get that laptop back on and do the work I'm getting paid to do. Oh, it is cold. This is the first time it's been really cold, um, actually, in the van. Uh, so I'm just uh, warming the, everything up, including myself. Um, I'm gonna head off to Glenfinnan in about five or so minutes when I can feel things. It's minus one outside. It's the first time it's gone minus in the van. Uh, but I got, I think it was 15 in the bed area. 
uh, and about 10 in the cab last night. So, I mean, yeah, when it comes to service week, I am definitely installing the heater so I can sit in bed, press the button and warm up because this is not cool. In fact, it is cool, that's the problem. This company sent me some photography gloves. I'm looking forward to testing them out. They've got like little flappy fingers. So um, that'll be fun. And uh, how long is it till the train? We've got two hours till the train, but it's such a popular place. I don't want to be late. I want to make sure I'm there well on time. Let's do it, let's go. I'm not a Potter fan, but that was pretty cool. The uh, the Jacobite train, the bridge is 180 odd years, it's very old, it's very, very old. And um, there were a lot of people up there. However, there was plenty of space, it wasn't too busy. Um, what happened was, at 10.49 on the dot, the train appeared. You could see the steam come around the corner and then it slowed down to a crawl, gave some blasts of his little whistle and then steamed on around the bridge and before you know it, it's finished and that's it for the day, twice in the summer, once in the winter. So um, yeah, I think the shots are okay, it was a cool experience and now it's time to head north again. think that'll do for the night. Nice. I don't really know what the score is with the Highland cows because I've been in the Highlands for a couple of days and they're very elusive these things, these beasts. But I've seen them from a distance on the side of some of these hills. I say hills, mountains. Um, I don't know, maybe next time. Well, everything you need to know about me is down in the description. And next time I'm gonna show you all around the Isle of Skye. So thank you very, very much for watching. I'm Dave Williams, this is Coffee Fernvey, and this has been June North. 
next week on June North. You'll see the Isle of Skye. I'll be going all the way around it. There's some terrible weather coming, and I definitely did meet some Highland cows. Make sure you come back next Sunday.